We have reason to believe one of those Americans will be released today, but until we actually see her safe and sound out of Gaza, we cannot have 100% certainty that it will happen. We have not gotten proof of life on any of them, and we do not know for certain that all three of them are still alive. That being said, we do believe, we are hopeful uh, that there will be additional Americans released. All right. uh, He's always, in touch with the Israeli you know, look, with it's Qatar, a sensitive issue. With Egypt. So he can't say too much. But why say anything at all? It's in his interests not in our interests, okay? Now, number one, he knows he's not going to get any tough questions on any of these shows. They never ask him about what happened in Afghanistan, and that is on him. He was one of the key decision makers. Can you imagine that? One of the biggest mistakes in American history, and he gets off scot-free. What about our border, our southern border? Never comes up? It's like they have an understanding. That's part of our national security. I would say these unvetted individuals are a threat to our national security. What about uh, anti-Semitism? You know, I kept hearing about white supremacy and what a threat that was to national security. What about anti-Semitism? I think it's right up there. Anyway, this is a commercial for him and his interests. That's what it's all about. We are pleased, by the way, to see that the hostages are released. Some of them, that little girl, Think about it for a moment. What does it say about the barbarians of Hamas, right? That they would take small children as hostages to begin with. It is totally inconceivable, but it's actually happening. And the idea that Americans, some Americans are rooting for the terrorists is disgusting. Then again, we are getting all kinds of mixed messages from Joe Biden who refuses to take on anti-Semitism in any serious way and seems, well, once again, trying to claim credit that doesn't belong to him. Let me back up. I'm, I cannot prove what I'm about to say. But I believe one of the reasons why Hamas struck when they did was they knew that I was working very closely with the Saudis and others in the region to bring peace to the region by having recognition of Israel and Israel's right to exist. Well, he can't prove it because it's false. He had nothing to do with that. That was a Trump administration accomplishment, the Abraham Accords. However, they did invade Hamas, I believe, because of Joe Biden, because of his weakness, his weakness, a signal to the world that you can get away with stuff that you've always wanted to get away with. The invasion of Ukraine, yeah, this terrorist attack, the worst that we've seen against Jews since the Holocaust. Where have we seen, say, Hezbollah, Iran, Islamic fascists get carried away before. Jimmy Carter, 444 days, our hostages in captivity under Jimmy Carter. Now, the moment they were released was the moment that Ronald Reagan became president. You think that's a coincidence? Ronald Reagan becomes president and the hostages come home. I know all that stuff about the October surprise and the negotiate. Don't worry about that. They were afraid of Reagan and what he might do. They're not afraid of, well, Joe Biden, and they certainly weren't afraid of Jimmy Carter. Remember that guy? As you know, there is a growing disrespect for government and for churches and for schools, the news media and other institutions. This is not a message of happiness or reassurance. But it is the truth, and it is a warning. All right. Hmm. Some of that stuff he had a point about. Doesn't matter. He conveyed weakness. We all know it. And the Russians saw it. And you know who was advising him back then, believe it or not? Jim, uh, Jimmy Carter was talking to Joe Biden. Hard to believe, but yeah, Joe Biden was a United States senator back then, showing Jimmy Carter the ways of Washington. This does not look like a a good, healthy conversation, whatever's going on there. All right. If we had Donald Trump in, this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Next. They like his fingernails? They'll, they'll take them out one by one. Yeah, let me in. Let them go, go, go. Why should I go? Why should I go? Tell me why I should go. I'm standing here. I'm an American. I have free, it's a free country. It's not like Egypt. <laughs> Did you rape your daughter like Muhammad did? 
Hmm? Did you rape your daughter like Muhammad? I don't speak English. You only speak English? No, speak no English. No. You don't speak English? Yes. All right. Well, that's, that, see, that just shows how ignorant you are. Because your Muhammad was a rapist. It says in the, in the Hadith, in, oh, your, in your holy book. You speak Arabic, the language of the Quran, the holy Quran, that some, some people use as a toilet. <laughs> oh, boy. This guy is asking for trouble, and he got it. Number three, this is Islamophobia, right? You're not supposed to talk like this. It's not nice. It's, uh, it's very hateful. It's wrong. Uh, I don't know enough about Islam, quite frankly, to criticize it. I, it's not my religion, but I don't know enough about it to criticize it. This guy thinks he does. Let's go through who he is and uh, what he did here. His name is uh, Stuart Seldowitz, 64 years old. Now, why this made news? Well, the Islamic phobic rant, and he was Obama's acting director for the National Security Council South Asia Directorate. Okay, that may sound important, but I think he worked in the basement of the basement of the State Department. Whatever. Um, he's been charged. Two counts, two counts, fourth degree hate crime, stalking. One count, second degree aggravated harassment, and they arrested the guy. They locked him up, they perp walked him, and I actually have a problem with that. I don't like his views at all, but you're allowed to have them. You're allowed, unfortunately, to hate people. I mean, it's unfortunate that people hate people, but I guess to have love, you need to have hate, right? I don't think this is right. The government can't tell us what to think, even if we think bad things, even if that guy thinks bad things and says bad things. We're not always going to be comfortable in this world. If we want to be comfortable, we should all stay in bed. Um, that's wrong. This, in my opinion, is a thought crime. And his vile speech is protected speech by the First Amendment. We'll see what happens. Hey, uh, everyone's coming down on this guy. And I get that with the criticism. Meanwhile, anti-Semitism is flourishing all over the place. You've seen the videos. It is getting totally out of hand. Jews are being cornered in libraries. Uh, a teacher here in New York City could not come out of the classroom because the students figured out that he had gone to a pro-Israel rally and they were upset and they were threatening him. They beat up a school safety officer. Uh, Joe Biden, where has he been on this? Remember how vocal he was on white supremacy, the myth, the phantom of white supremacy? Is he saying anything about anti-Semitism? No, he's just moping around Nantucket, pretending to be an ordinary guy. Now, why is he not speaking about anti-Semitism? Because if you look closely, well, a lot of these anti-Semites are his base, right? Those who voted for him, young people, and yeah, I'll say a disproportion of them seem to be, well, persons of color. Right, after, right out of the BLM kind of uh, handbook, right? Those young college kids, often persons of color. Um, there are a lot of persons of color, obviously, a lot of white people who are not anti-Semite, right? But <laughs> this, is a, this is a thing, right? He does not want to antagonize, say, AOC, Rashid Tlaib, because those people support them and support Palestine and support Hamas. You can support Palestine, you can't support the terrorists. Fair enough, fair enough. Now, to throw, a, well, a strange one into the mix, John and Cindy McCain. John McCain, of course, uh, dead. Uh, Cindy McCain is alive and well and totally misemployed. You know she's the, um, the director of the World Food Program? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm surprised as anybody. Take a look. We turn now to the executive director of the World Food Program, Cindy McCain, also part of the United Nations. Wow. World Food Program. Well, how did she get such a high profile gig when her experience is in beer distributorship? That's right. Her family, they're big in beer. And that's how she made her money. And that's how she, well, funneled money to McCain. McCain could not have gotten elected to Congress had he not been married to her. Um, all right. So what is she doing there? Well, thank you for having me. 
Uh, first of all, the, the bottom line here is that we need to get more aid in, as, uh, as has been said. Uh, we are looking at uh, possible, possibly being on the brink of famine in this region. Uh, this is something that's not only terrific, but it will spread. And, and with that comes disease and, and everything else that you can imagine. All right, blah, 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 blah. I want everybody to have enough food. I just am totally puzzled that she's running that suspect organization. They've had a lot of problems, right? Um, why is she there? Why is she in the public eye? Why? She endorsed Joe Biden, huh? How about that John McCain? Does it say something about John McCain? May he rest in peace that Cindy endorsed Joe Biden and now gets these uh, big jobs. Well, it got me thinking about Cindy McCain. I thought I heard that name somewhere else in some other context, and I did. It, it hides in plain sight. Epstein was hiding in plain sight. We all knew about him. We all knew what he was doing. But we had no one that was, no um, uh, legal aspect that would go after him. They were afraid of him. For whatever reason, they were afraid of him. Wow. I did not know about Epstein Island. I did not, I knew he was a convicted sex offender. A lot of people blew that off. But she knew about, that's wrong. That is wrong. <laughs> And why didn't she do anything about it? But there she is getting TV time, just like Jake Sullivan, making the rounds, not saying much of anything, but incurring some risk. Hostage negotiations are going on. You could say the wrong thing. He takes that risk and he goes on television. Why? To promote his own brand. Because just like before Joe Biden became president and after, Jake is going to be in business, along with Tony. These two are some of the richest guys in Washington and they exploit the world situation through a private company that Tony Blinken founded. It's called West Exec. You can look it up. A special company with special clients and all kinds of special money. I wonder if it was worth it. it certainly wasn't for us. 